Hey team, who's ready for a deep dive into stuff that everybody should be talking about because we have, well, let me take a step back and wait for this to make sure it's working. Thank you, Mr. Hammer, so much. I appreciate you. Yes, we're working. We should have sound and everything else, but everything works in cycles. We're in the fourth cycle of Bitcoin, but every cycle in between during the bear market, it's a time to build stuff. And guess what? New stuff is being built ever since late last year. And there's two spin-offs from the old Facebook DM team we need to look at carefully today and see if they are a bona fide threat. So as usual, let's go deep. Uh, ready? Buckle in. About 35 nuggets in this one. And of course, none of this is ever investment advice. So first of all, the story will be real quick. Assault killers. Who are they? Are they a threat? What does the technology look like? What does the hardware look like? The speed, the cost, how they operate, who is behind them most importantly, and where we see them going and if we should be worried. So first of all, the origins of Aptos and Sui, the two names we're going to look at, Aptos Blockchain and Sui, part of Miston Labs. Uh, they both came out of the Facebook DM project, which was kind of disbanded, probably because of regulatory reasons. But uh, let's go a little bit further. So how are they similar to Solana? So you could say they are also similar to some other names, but mostly similar to Solana. And they are both uh, proof of stake chains. They both have no need for layer two band-aids, kind of like Ethereum sometimes does. And they all do parallel execution. But Solana handles it on individual node level and Sui and Aptos handle it on the entire network. There's a lot more though. Hold on. Let's, we're going to jump into each one separately because they're both similar, but also very different. So first of all, the Sui team, uh, the Sui founders, we have uh, four folks here, Evan Chang, Adonai Abiodun, Sam Blackshear, and George Denisis. And these guys all have tremendous experience for the sake of time. I don't want to go into great detail about them, but again, former DM folks. Now, what is Sui? It's the world's first permissionless layer one blockchain designed from the ground up. It is decentralized proof of stake, as you mentioned before. It is horizontally scalable through put in storage. The storage thing we'll talk about in a minute too. And the former Facebook team formed Mistin Labs, the company behind Sui. And they are also building using Move. And we're going to talk more about that Move language as well and how it compares. And as you know from many of my previous videos, the programming language is extremely important. Therefore, we're going to spend some time on it. So Sui from 30,000 feet, as you can see from the look and feel, it's definitely a Web3 play. Obviously, Web3 gets a lot of VC money, etc. And they are focused on things like NFTs and user empowerment. It's also cheap and fast and instant finality or near instant finality. And uh, very, sound very familiar with some other things. So that was from their website. Now, the SUI consensus mechanism uses a DAG-like structure called Narwhal and Tusk. And as a result, it's much more similar to Avalanche than it is Solana. And Avalanche was in the news today, but I'm not going to talk about that. Now, SUI uses DAG mempool to run parallel processing at the execution layer. And the async processes make it more resilient to DDoS attacks. Very important because Solana was subject to some of those spam attacks as well in the past. Now, the transactions per second for SUI is 120,000 transactions per second. And I do focus a lot on things like speed and daily active users. But when you compare 120,000 transactions per second to 15 for Ethereum and some other chains, it's, it sounds incredibly high. But you also have to remember that Solana crapped out recently at 400,000 transactions per second about nine, 10 months ago. And uh, that's the theoretical limit of Solana's about over 720,000. Um, so again, we'll see if that is enough. I don't think it is. I think any blockchain that is built today needs to be at a million TPS, but that's just me. Now, how SUI works? Real simple. It's very early to see exactly how it works, but this is kind of their structure. Obviously, it has a staking rewards component. And the there are two differences between the different proof of stake systems. One, that they do consider that they ensure a smooth source of resource, rewards over time for those that stake, which is kind of interesting. It's as if they're kind of sitting on rewards and drip them out over time. And the second is the SUI storage model that delivers. So again, a couple of new 
nuances here with how that proof of stake mechanism works. But again, until we really see it up live and running, it's very hard to say. So again, we won't spend too much time on that. Now, the VC backers, I always say, <laughs> follow the money, follow the smart money too when it comes to up and coming companies. I love them or I hate them. The VCs are everywhere. So they did land a Series A, $36 million, led by A16Z. That's Andreessen and Partners. Uh, Red Point is in there, Lightspeed, Coinbase Ventures, and a few others. And the Series B is the most important one because $36 million isn't a lot of money. But the $200 million round that's been put together now and led by Sam Bankman Fried at FTX is at a $2 billion valuation. So basically, they sell 10% of the company to raise $200 million. A simple way to look at it and that is a big chunk of change but let's look at the tokenomics right now again we don't know much about how the allocation works but the sui all capitalized will be the native asset the total supply is capped at 10 billion but what's interesting about that 10 billion is they do say in their white paper each sui token is divisible up to a large number of decimal places so that could become trillions of tokens easily. And uh, a share of SUI still supply, of course, will be liquid at mainnet launch, which is coming in Q3, apparently. Um, and the remaining tokens investing over the coming years are distributed as future stake subsidies. So we don't know the actual breakdown yet of exactly what it looks like. Now, switch gears to talk about Aptos, the number two player. So we did SUI, Aptos is number two. So let's look at the founders. Uh, here we have Avery Ching and Mo Shake. Uh, for those WEF fans out there, <laughs> Mo Sheikh apparently spoke at the World Economic Forum in Davos. So again, it's good to get that speaking opportunity, but some people don't like the type of stuff that's discussed there. But that's a separate issue. Let's move on. Let's talk about the consensus mechanism. And unlike the SUI one, which is similar to Avalanche, Aptos was built with security in mind. So it has numerous other features beyond those built directly. And it uses a thing called Block STM. And this is the DM BFT V4, which is derived from the Hustaf protocol designed to DM. So this was the underpinning of the security of the DM coin way back when. So they, they are, it's as if Aptos is keeping a lot of the original Facebook DM technology as they go forward. And you see the bifurcation of the direction between SUI and Aptos right now. This is one of the key points. Aptos as well was developed by Mo and Avery, like you mentioned. Aptos follows the original design of DM. As I mentioned, whoops, and be repetitive. Uh, they can believe it should be able to handle 160,000 TPS. We talked about speed. We'll recap on that towards the end. Uh, their block STM is their secret source for highly efficient multi threading and, of course, scale and security, which is very, very important, and parallelization as well to scale horizontally. And there will be an Aptos token, but we don't know much about it yet. It'll be used for transaction fees, governance, voting, and securing the blockchain. And there is a white paper that we dug into a little bit. In fact, this came from the white paper of how Aptos works. And they have a novel validator and governance in their chain. And you can see it right there on the slide. And a set of validators will jointly receive and process transactions from users using the usual BFT, which is the Byzantine Fault Tolerance, proof of stake consensus mechanism. And token holders lock up their stake um, in their selected validators. And each validator's consensus voting weight is proportionate to the amount staked into it. Again, very, very similar to many of the other chains out there. And the validator can activate act to be active and participate in consensus, etc. So we will see where this all this goes. But again, nothing too radically different from what we've seen in the past. Now, Aptos did publish this where they benchmark themselves against other chains. I thought what was interesting about this chart, and I'm not sure exactly who put it together, but it was, you know, leaked out by Aptos. They did mention SUI. So it's not on the list, but we have names like at the top of the list is Solana. Obviously Solana has the big target on their backs and it, they did at least say max TPS 120,000 and 710,000 on a one gigabyte network. Um, the current TPS is two to 3,000 the way it runs um, every day when it is not congested. I have to openly say that. Aptos, uh, the finality is less than one second. Actually, the data on the finality for Solana is also less than one second right now. It's a lot less than one second. But the max TPS is 160,000. Again, you can see the target on the back. And the current TPS in a test net is 4,200. And Avalanche is there too. 
internet computer, uh, Phantom, Ethereum, Terra, Bitcoin, Binance Smart Chain, etc. Again, these are kind of the players that I think they deem as competition as they go forward. Now let's talk about the VC backers. The VC investment of uh, 350 million led by A16Z with participation from FTX, FTX Ventures, Jump, Tiger, etc. is a pretty big deal. Also multi-coin capital, Coinbase Ventures are on there. So you can see the who's who of crypto backers. Um, sometimes it's almost a little bit incestuous as to how they all play in the same uh, funds. But let's move on. Let's talk about one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is uh, this was in Famex magazine and uh, Aptos is gunning for 1 billion users. This was published the 19th of August. A lot of stuff is coming to the head right now in the press for these two, uh, Sui and Aptos. But Solana has been talking about a billion users for a long time. That was a release down there from 2021. So again, Everybody wants to have a billion users, maybe with 8 billion people on planet Earth that can be 8 chains that have a billion dollars each. I don't know. But the first to get to a billion will be very interesting. And that's also an important thing. We're going to look at the technology real quick. I know this might be boring for some, but it's very, very important to look at as well. Because to pull any substantial conclusions, we need to look at exactly what's happening with the type of technology, how it's used, especially in light of some recent events where people admitted that if they had a do-over, they would have chosen different technologies. So first of all, the move language is very similar to Rust, which is used by both Solana and Near Protocol. And move is a new smart contract programming language with an emphasis on safety and flexibility. The Aptos blockchain uses move's object model to represent its ledger state. And it uses move code modules to encode rules of the state of transitions. And again, Move is based on Rust, like we said, and we'll see. So it looks like all the new chains are gravitating towards this Rust type basis. Very similar to Jack Dorsey saying it's the best programming language out there. Sorry if there's any developers in the audience that might find that a horrific statement because it's happened to me before whenever I said that. But again, I'm just quoting what other people are doing and using. Um, now, the Move language is designed to address the challenge uh, representing digital assets on chain in a way that reduces the risk of unexpected smart contract execution. This is so, so important. This is where some of the EVM uh, compatible chains have a slight exposure. And the main goal is to eliminate vulnerabilities entirely in smart contracts. And again, things like focus, uh, move focuses and currencies, tokens, and any other assets and so-called resource types based in their linear logic. So again, DM was designed to be kind of like a, CBDC, like a token, like a new currency, therefore it is built with security in mind from the ground up. There are a couple of issues potentially with Move. Again, it's so early now, it's hard to say, but is it is a new language? Not that many people know it. Uh, they need money to bootstrap it, to not only bring on developers, but train them. They might be able to recruit Rust developers from Nier and Solana to help because it's very similar. And uh, Solidity, though, is the dominant language and the dominant player in the blockchain languages field. And that is used by all EVM chains, uh, mainly Ethereum and EVM compatible chains, too, as we go forward. So there's a couple of things to bear in mind with Move programming language. And EVM versus Move differences. This is important because you could say that these two may be Solana killers, but anything that kills Solana will also hurt Ethereum, uh, we believe. So... EVM is the Solidity type system. It's very effective at preventing stuck executions. However, it's not effective at preventing runtime errors and accessing non-existing functions. Therefore, it is considered a risk by these two new chains. And Move moves resources safely guarantees means that ownership metadata for objects assets remain consistent across all assets. And move-based blockchains can both execute and commit transactions using the object in parallel. So very, very important subtle difference between the two. Now, the two major projects using move, of course, Aptos and SUI, but they use it in slightly different ways. So the Aptos claims a network will process 106,000 transactions per second on its blockchain with very low transaction costs per user. And SUI is decentralized, permissionless L1 designed to make it easier for creators and devs to build Web3 and focus on user design. Remember, they're both built by the same team, 
but they're spinning the same language and approach in a different way, maybe for different types of use cases down the line. That's important for us to consider too. So this was a cool piece I found as well. It's basically SUI and Aptos hardware requirements as benchmarked against other organizations, other blockchains. So you can see uh, that apparently you can have things like Algorand, Aptos, SUI can run off MacBook Pros. But when I dug into some of the data, it did say the first 1,000 validators on, like I think it was SUI, uh, would have to be on the Google Cloud platform. So I'm not sure about that. It's like like we covered, I think over the weekend, 57% uh, of Ethereum runs on a couple of uh, centers like AWS and Azure. We might see the same thing happening with these new chains going forward too. You can see as well the heavy storage required for Binance Smart Chain and Solana, 1,000 and 2,000 gigabytes respectively, and also the heavy RAM usage by Solana, 128 gigs versus 8 by Aptos and 8 by SUI. So again, more similarities here between Aptos and SUI from a hardware perspective as well. So conclusion, the fun part. So should we be worried? So let's talk about the differences between SUI and Aptos first. Aptos seems to be sticking with the original DM design. SUI implements parallel execution differently, taking the original DM design in a different direction. And SUI focuses more on an object-centric design that is better suited for storage and distinguishing properties of that object, such as whether an object is owned, shared, mutable, immutable, etc. Very key consideration there. And Aptos seems more focused on the networks, whereas SUI has more focus on the dApps and the ecosystem making it easier for developers to build uh, dApps as they go forward. And they also have different consensus mechanisms. Uh, SUI uses the DAG, Narwhal, and Tusk, very similar to Avalanche, whereas Aptos uses blocked STM, which is considered kind of more secure uh, for the network and is safer to use. Now, the big question that you all want to know, could these be ether salt killers? So we dug deep into them, and if they fly, they could definitely eat into the EVM-compatible chains. Um, but... And I, I have to say this carefully, you know, when they're coming out, yeah, let me step out for this because it's very, very important. You have to see my eyes when I say this. Every four years, every cycle, new chains come out and they come out with radically new approaches, radically new technology. And I don't see that quantum leap in these two chains right now. So I would expect it 1 million TPS out of the box and a whole bunch of other bells and whistles. And I'm not seeing that. It's just an incremental improvement. So with that, I do not see any radical value proposition or differences with Solana at this stage. And Solana still is in beta, so there's a lot of work to go. But despite that, it has more transactions than all the chains combined and uh, has a very hefty amount of daily active users. It also has a two-year head start on the path to 1 billion users, which now Aptos is coining. And Aptos and Sui could attract some devs from Solana and Near over time, which is a risk because the way these chains grow is with the developers. You rip all the developers away and you're in hot water. That's a key issue. Another, some other key issues to consider is the level of decentralization. It's going to take a long time for these chains to have a large number of independent validators and a very good Nakamoto coefficient. Uh, the security and speed and cost and uptime and how many develops they, developers they can attract, that's all out right now. We don't know yet what's going to happen. You know, they're not even launched as it stands right now. The other big thing is, because yeah, I know the question will come, if I was to bet on one, which one? Well, despite the fact that SUI has more devs per GitHub, which is a key factor we look at, the smarter money seems to be behind Aptos. Again, you've got FTX Ventures, got Sam Bankman Free leading that big round as well. Um, um, so it's hard to say which one. There's also a mix of funding, a mix of players, a lot of the same players, a lot of different players. And who knows where it'll all go? But uh, I think Aptos, for my money, is kind of more interesting at this stage of the game. So watch out, though. But this is also very important. We're in this cycle, and many people were uh, kind of upset with what happened to the last cycle. You know, Solana was the king of the last cycle. It ran very hard, and it fell back down. But it's still doing better than most. Now, just, just because it went up very high, very fast, wait for the time of the launch. Watch for VCs chasing exit liquidity. You don't want to be left holding the bull. 
some of us made that mistake last year. And one of these uh, could be the Solana of 2023-2024. My money is on Aptos, but again, that could all change. Everything is in flux. These things are so nascent, it's hard to believe. You know, we even said that uh, yesterday, yesterday's video, Solana was still very nascent in terms of its ecosystem and TVL and growth. It's still so young. These ones are even younger. So still a lot to learn, a lot to watch, a lot to monitor. But right now, we will be on them and monitoring very carefully. So I hope you like this one. Big thank you to everybody in the chat out there. And I'll see you all tomorrow.